Hey, good morning. Welcome back to Daily Devotions. Hope that you're having a wonderful day. Today, we are in the book of Acts, chapter 14, and we're going to continue Paul and Barnabas' missionary journey. This is Paul's first missionary journey, and um, let's see where they end up going in chapter 14. And it came to pass, Ichanim, that they, Barnabas and Paul, went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. Now, remember how we talked about how if there was a Jewish person from another town in your synagogue, it was custom after the reading to let them say something. So, and so spake, Barnabas and Paul spake, and the result was that a great multitude, both of Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. They preached Jesus, which was their what they were prone to do, and people believed. But... The unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. So apparently, some of the Jews who had persecuted them in Antioch, where they had just come from, followed them to this place to stir up the people against them. How kind of them. Verse 19 tells us that there was like a group, a mob following them. Long time, but long time. Therefore abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord. Uh, so before the uprising, they were there a long time, speaking boldly, which gave testimony into the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. So there was miracle signs and wonders done. They had been there a while, and they spoke boldly. Long time. The Jews' words took a while to resonate with the people of this town. So there was a lot of good going on at this time. But the multitude of the city was divided, part with the Jews, part with the apostles. All right, so there's mixed feelings about this new Jesus message. There's mixed feelings about Paul and Barnabas. And because if you can't discredit the message, which they couldn't, they couldn't discredit the message of Jesus. They couldn't discredit the signs, miracles, and wonders. What do you do next? You take out the messenger. And when there was an assault made, both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with the rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them. All right, so the Jews had finally succeeded in inflaming the Gentiles against them, and the mob planned to stone Barnabas and Paul. And they were aware of it, and they fled to Lystra and Darby in the cities of uh, uh, Laconia, Laconia, and unto the region that lieth about it. And there they preached the gospel. And there was a certain man at Lystra, now, Lystra was about 18 miles south and a little west of Iconium. They, uh, there seemed to be here in this town, in Lystra, no Jewish synagogues. Um, such, so Paul and Barnabas preached in public places. There was no Jewish synagogues here. And this was a very uh, pagan town. There, but there was a man here who was impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, and who had never walked. Um, how do you get the attention and how do you make people believe in a town that you had never been and has no idea who Jesus is and doesn't worship the same God you do? Not even close. The, the same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. So Paul's preaching in the marketplace. Paul sees this man, says, you know what? This guy wants to be healed. And he said with a loud voice, straight, straight, stand up on your feet. And he leaped and he walked. And whenever the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying, uh, saying in the speech of uh, Lys, uh, Laconia, the, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. They called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercury because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and they would have done sacrifice with the people. They were so excited they were going to sacrifice about this which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of, they rent their clothes and they ran out with the people crying out and saying, sirs, why do you do these things? We are men of like passions with you. Hey, we're just like you. And preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Hey, you don't have to do this. You can turn to a living God. He's real, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that are in. I love how he mentions heaven and earth because where is Mercury? Where is Jupiter? They have a priest of Jupiter here. They worship. So in other words, they worship the stars. They worship the hosts of heavens. And, and so that was their appeal here. They said, hold on. We're just like you. But you, need, you don't need to worship those things. You need to worship the God who made them, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, said every nation has walked in their own way, but he left none himself without witness. 
in that he did good and he gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling the hearts with food and gladness. Even in whenever we weren't right, God was still good. And with these sayings, scarce restrained the people that they should not have done sacrifice unto them. Don't sacrifice for me. The town didn't have any semblance of Judaism. It was completely pagan. They likened Peter to Mercury, Barnabas to Jupiter. But when the lame man was healed, they wanted to offer sacrifice. Paul didn't run out there and condemn their beliefs. No, he attempted to introduce them to Jesus in terms that they could understand, asking them to consider the God who made Mercury and Jupiter and the heavens and the earth and the seas and gives rain and dew and food and gladness. They were turning the hearts of the people. And there came thither certain Jews, oh, they're back, from Antioch and Achim, who persuaded the people. And having stoned Paul, drew out of the city, supposing him to be dead. So the Jews show up. They persuade some of the people of Lystra. They stone Steve, uh, they stone Paul, think he's dead. How be it? As the disciples stood up around about him, he rose up and came into the city. The next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. So Paul and Barnabas escaped the mob in Iconum, but they followed them to Lystra and convinced the town they needed to be stoned. They stoned them, but either they didn't kill them like they thought or God raised them up. There's debate on that. But here's what we know uh, that scripture will tell us later. The missionaries are already one. They already won many disciples in this town among whom no doubt was a young man by the name of Timothy. Remember the name Timothy, which was a very important role. He will have a very important role later in the story. And whenever they had preached the gospel in that city, to that city, Derby, now they moved on to Derby, they had taught many and returned again to Lystra and Iconum and Antioch. Now this was the other Antioch. This was, this was a home Antioch. This was the other. Remember there was two. What we know about this trip to Derby is that they preached the gospel, taught many, and Derby was a turning point to go back home. They returned to Lystra and Achaemen and Antioch, so they retraced their steps. They stopped um, at each place along the way that they had left disciples, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that they, that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. That was the message to say, hey, you got to keep the faith. There's going to be a lot of tribulation, but you'll enter the kingdom of God. You got to just keep the faith. They felt the necessity to return to these new converts, encourage and strengthen and confirm their faith and to provide future spiritual guidance. That's what good leaders do. And when they had ordained them elders in every church, they had planted four churches on this trip. They ordained elders. They established the work. They prayed, fasted, and commended them to the Lord on whom they believe. So they set up elders or leaders in these churches. And after they passed through Peseda, they came to Pamphylia. And when they preached the word in Perga, they went to Antilia and thence sailed to Antioch, the other Antioch, home Antioch, from whence they had recommend, been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. So they did what they were called to do. Now they were going home. And when they came, they had gathered at the church together. They rehearsed all that had been done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there had abode a long time with the disciples. So although some do not re require, I want to kind of highlight this, this, they rehearsed all that God had done, they had opened door, and they were telling it all to the original church that sent them. You know, it doesn't always require formal position to make a difference. You can serve. Um, but God rarely calls people to act alone. He usually calls them to be a part of a team, to be sent out by an organization like a local church. It was the local church that sent out Paul and Barnabas on these missionary journeys. They went and did it, and then they went back to report what had happened. They were accountable. There's power and accountability. One leader sends, others go. Both support each other. There must be accountability in our mission. There must be accountability in what we do. And so that was the trip. They, that was the first missionary journey. They hit a few cities. They planted some churches. They won some souls. They got stoned. Um, they had John Mark with them. He didn't make the trip. But, um, and then they went home to tell about it. And so do something today. Ask God, God, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Who can I lead to you today? 
Now, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow with Acts chapter 15. God bless. Bye-bye.